Get it, David. Come on. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Energy. Let it out. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. A machine here. There you go. Nobody works like David in this house. Seventeen. They don't know me, son. Get it. Eighteen. They don't know me, son. Get it. Nineteen. They don't know me, son. Yeah. Twenty. You got they some more in you. Study strategy over the years and achieve the spirit of the warrior. You have to keep attacking. The enemy has to know he is not going to give up. You must break the soul of whatever the fuck is in front of you. If you keep on attacking something, nothing wants to stand in front of anything. Lay hold of it. You lay hold of it. And when that thing tells you to quit, you look at it in his eye and say, I ain't going nowhere. I will break you before you break me. You will not defeat me. You will not destroy me. Some of you are so ignorant. You've been through so much hell. You gonna quit now? You should have quit 10 years ago when you got raped. You should have quit 10 years ago when he walked out on you. You should have been quit. You don't quit now. It's the 10th round. If you don't go out there and give 120%, you're not a man. A man don't always put forth effort and accomplish his goals. As men, we fail too. We don't always do everything perfect. But if you're a real man, you try. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you're a real man, you try. I said my, my, my biological father wasn't no real man, not because I'm mad at my man, but he, didn't, he, he wasn't there. I don't care what you believe in. doesn't matter. I'm not judging anybody. But let's say my thing is God. You get to heaven, I'm 300 pounds, I sit down. I was a cockroach, terminated my whole life. And we're sitting down just like this. You're God and I'm David. Now look at this chart. And on the chart, it has all these different things, but my name's on it. But these things aren't me. I was going to change the world. I was going to set records. I was going to be a Navy SEAL. I was going to be honored here, honored there. And I'm like, God, I was, this isn't me. Like it says, David Goggins, I was an Ecolab guy. I sprayed for cockroaches and I'm 300 pounds. I said, here, I'm 185. And God goes, no, that's who you were supposed to be. My biggest fear in life is that there is a final resting place in this world. And there's a final judgment. And you talk to something much bigger than you. I don't want to sit down and have a conversation with someone, with something that says, you're in heaven, this is what you should have been on earth. Don't be upset by what you did not do. Don't be upset. I don't want you to be upset. I don't want you to be angry. I want you to be like, I didn't get the results because I didn't do the work. Everything that's happening to you is God is processing. Every difficult moment you're having, he just processing you. Everything you're going through is preparing you for what you ask God for. I've often got a picture in my mind of a conversation that's going on up in heaven. God looking down at Dwayne and the angel walks up and says, man, what a loser. I mean, look at him. He just lost his temper again. He just failed at that again. He just crashed and burned again. Man, I like to picture God looking down and saying, yeah, but that boy just won't quit. You meet a family that is wealthy. Somewhere back in their lineage generationally, they weren't. And then something happens. The one shows up. In every family, there's the one. And that one changes that family forever. In my family, I'm the one. We don't think like we used to think. Crazy means that you have the ability to see things that other people can't. And if you're not crazy, you're never going to succeed at anything in life. Everybody has got to be a little bit off. And that's the problem with some of you. You always want to blame other people. You always want to you want to hold other people to the fire, but you're not holding yourself to the fire. You just said you're giving 50%. You owe you an explanation. You owe you an explanation. You need to look at yourself in the mirror and say, why are you only giving 50%? What's wrong with you? We are not here to be happy. People always say they want to be happy. But my question is, why? You had your happy days as a child. You are a man now. You have responsibilities to fulfill. A lot of things in life are hard. How hard are you to kill? Your job is to solve problems. And if you solve that problems, you will get your happiness. But if you are sad now and you don't solve your problems, nothing will happen. Everything in life comes down to this. No matter how hard you train, how hard you go out there and run and swim and lift weights, whatever the fuck you're doing to get in shape, it always comes down to this. Anything that annoys you, 
is teaching you patience. Anyone who abandons you is teaching you how to stand up on your own two feet. Anything that angers you is teaching you forgiveness. Most people don't want to go to that extra mile. Most people don't want to find that extra because it sucks. It's miserable. It's lonely. It's so easy to be great nowadays, my friend, because most people are weak. Tell me one good reason why you should not get your ass up to work. You know it, I know it, God knows what you have to do. You easily can get up and go there, but you just sit around and let your feelings decide. What is wrong with you? Don't let your feelings decide what you do, just do it. I became obsessed. I became obsessed with being the baddest motherfucker that God ever created. Am I that? I don't care. I believe it. And I was trying to tell him, once you become obsessed with something, obsessed, it's okay to be unbalanced for a while. It's okay. Don't be, all this stuff people say, you got to be balanced. To be the best in the world at what you do. It's not about being a Navy SEAL, people. The best at what you do, you have to be unbalanced to find every bit of fucking energy and strength that you have to pull it off. Then you get balanced once you become great. Nowadays, people see legends like Tyson, Ali, Sugar Ray Robinson, and so on, thinking they were particularly gifted or talented. But the truth is, they worked harder than everybody else. What them made so popular is their character. Every one of them walked his own path to the top. They experienced different things and got who they are now. Legends. There's no talent here. This is hard work. This is an obsession. Talent does not exist. We are all e equals as human beings. You could be anyone if you put in the time. You will reach the top and that's that. So I am not talented. I am obsessed. The only difference between us and these legends is that we are on this path right now. It is in our hands in which direction we go. We have the same two options they had. Either we decide to win or to lose. It's not impossible, but you need the right mindset. And the most important thing, discipline. I did my homework and it said that a reason why a person becomes a legend is because in their field, they get to such, they get to Jupiter in their field. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. So you can't be average and be a legend. That's why I need you to work on legendary style. You can't be good and be a legend. You can't be a good person and be a legend. You can't be great, really, and be a legend. You gotta be phenomenal. I want you to push for legend. You have to get up and build your own legacy, no matter if you feel like it or not. You can't just sit around and hoping for results. If you do nothing, you can't have any results. No results, no progress. No progress and another wasted day nobody will give you back. If you want to win, you have to be disciplined. So go out there and build your legacy. Write history. Wake up. Time catches up with you. Time is running past you. While you're lying in your bed or wherever, someone is working on themselves. Someone is paving the way for their future. It's easy once you understand it. I'll tell you, pure discipline and you can have it all. Be a menace and put your hate into something useful instead of complaining about others. You have no time. I can tell you that now or death will. The Bible says he who loves to sleep and the folding of hands, poverty will set upon you like a thief in the night. You'll notice that there's some people doing certain things and other people doing other things. Why? Because everybody that's in the dream ain't living the dream. There are people in other countries that will kill you to get here to get this opportunity. There are people who come to this country and don't know the language and don't take no class but figure it out quick. Why? Because they're hungry so they can do what feeds their family. It's a mindset. If you stay in bed, if you stay on the couch, if you stay in your comfort zone, if you only do what is easy, your life will be hard. But if you do what is hard, if you get up, if you grind, if you are relentless, if you work as hard as possible, when other people are slacking off, your life will be easy. What do you do when a thousand other people want exactly what you want? What if you're not the only one that wants what you want? What if there are thousands of other people who want what you want? You have to outwork them. You got to outbind them. You got to get up earlier. You got to stay up later. You got to execute and you got to go from 7 to 120. Listen to me very closely. I didn't come in here to tell you you're going to finish school. I came to ask you what's next. I came to ask you what's next. I don't care who's doing better than me because I'm doing better than I was last year. It's me against me. And so I respect the last name. Everywhere I go, I bring my mama pride. Everywhere I go.
much as they love the prize. And some of y'all just want to score. You don't like the process. You're not in love with the process. You're going to die never even trying to reach your full potential. This was the life that you were supposed to live, but you didn't try. Those of you who are listening to this, whoever hear this, you will not find toughness in a comfortable environment. Dedication, hard work, dedication, hard work, on one man army. If you want to be a diamond, you must go through extreme pressure. If you can't take pressure, then you're not a diamond. After you go through all the pressure you thought you could not handle and you think it's over, then they turn on the heat. Of all the stuff I've gone through in my life, eating out of trash cans, sleeping in abandoned buildings, the worst thing that ever happened is when I went to the hospital and they told me my wife had a chronic illness and she might not be able to walk one day. People say E.T. Ask C.J. It never broke me. Why? Because I've been broken so much. I've been defeated so much. I've been disappointed so much in my life that I know what it feels like and I can handle it. Discipline. Discipline enables a person to do that which needs to be done, which is also my definition of a professional, no matter how he feels within. The person you just heard talking was Cus D'Amato. He was the coach of Mike Tyson back in the days. He formed him and gave him this mindset. Discipline is the difference between a professional and an amateur. Yeah. I don't care how good you are in anything. You don't have discipline. You ain't nobody. Right. That has to be something that you also learn from Cus as well. I don't, I don't know what discipline is. I don't know what discipline is. He taught me discipline is doing what you hate to do, but do it like you love it. It is no question that discipline is the key to success. The question is, how long can you stay disciplined? Imagine doing the thing you do your whole life but without success. When you are able to think that way and you are still doing your thing, then you master discipline. Don't get me wrong, you should do something where other people were already been successful at, but keep that in your mind. You wanna know where discipline comes from? It comes from telling yourself the truth about where you are about what is going on in your life. You can lie to yourself and then you don't need discipline. You can tell yourself everything's okay and then you don't need discipline. You can tell yourself, you can lie to yourself and say that you're winning and then you don't need discipline. But if you tell yourself the truth, if you tell yourself the truth that you know you could be better, you know you could do more. If you tell yourself the truth, you won't have to find discipline. Discipline will find you. So tell yourself the truth and get up. There are things to do. Children of history, man. No purpose or place. We have no great war, no great depression. Our great war is a spiritual war. Over the time, people lost their will, the duty to go through tough times for their family, for themselves, the mentality to win. The reality is, you have to build up a strong mind to go through these dark times. Most of us are not living in war. We are blessed to live in peace. But that doesn't mean that there are no problems no more. A lot of people are living from day to day, not thinking of the future, to be financially independent, reaching their highest potential, helping other people. Your brain is the most powerful weapon in the world. Once you put away your phones and your computers and all that shit we have nowadays, that's great. We're up to date. We, you know, you, but your brain is the only thing you have when you're going through depression, when, you, when you're going through hard times, you're going through death, real life shit. You can't Google that shit, man. You're alone. You're alone. You may have a shrink you're going to, you may have a best friend you're going to, but there's 24 hours in the day where you're alone in this brain. So start to think for the future and do something. Do something where you're good at and start getting disciplined. Use your brain and get out of your comfort zone. Let the feelings aside. If you think the price of winning is too high, wait till you get the bill from regret. The question isn't, can you handle the situation? The question is, can you handle your mind? On the other side of temporary pain, you meet your other self. So all pain, no matter what it is, it is temporary. And if you can survive it, on the other side of it, you will meet personality traits, emotions, thoughts, people, circumstances, versions of you that you didn't know existed before. It's a commitment, not a feeling. When you get up in the morning, you don't give yourself a choice. You grind. 
no matter what. When you're just not feeling it, you gotta force yourself. When your feelings tell you no, you tell them to shut the f*** up. You don't wanna get up and get out of bed, you get up and get the f*** out of bed. You don't wanna study, you f***ing study. You don't wanna get to work, you get to f work. When everything in you is kicking and screaming, you have to take control and tell yourself, I do not stop. It's hard to keep going when no one is supporting you, when no one is clapping for you. And that is exactly why you have to become your own biggest fan. You really do have to believe in yourself when no one else does. I want you to go in confidence that you've never had before. And every giant in your life, slay him. You go back and slay him. Don't kill him, slay him. Rule number six, if the plan doesn't work, change the plan but never the goal. Be the guy who embraces the ugly, the miserable. Be the guy who embraces hard work, the grind. Don't be afraid of being hurt. Don't be afraid of sacrificing some blood. That's the only way you ever get where you want to go. You have to take a path that's dangerous, and most people want to take the safe path. The safe path leaves you stuck in quiet desperation. So whatever you're doing, you have to do it like your life depends on it. If you feel bad today, you chase your dream. If you feel good today, you chase your dream. You understand what I'm trying to say. A grown man is able to do things he don't want to do to get the one thing he wants. There will be a lot of fear and hate in your life. The question is, will you give up and throw your whole life, which is God given into the trash can? Or will you survive no matter what is happening with God on your side? We have to always remember, our purpose will always be there. I have nothing in front of me right now. No race, no nothing. But the purpose is myself. Your mind has to be stronger than your feelings. On those bad days, when you think that you're alone, you just might be. Because you know why? No one else wants to fucking do it. So you be the motherfucker that always gets it done. Stay hard. The results told you to stop. You, the results told you you ain't getting what you want. The results made you frustrated. The results had you tired. The results got you feeling some type of way. You don't like the results. And what we do when we don't like the results, instead of changing, we do more of what we were doing that wasn't working in the first place. When you get to the point where you do the work consistently, you invest in yourself consistently, you make sacrifices consistently when everybody else is slacking off, when everybody's partying, when everybody's making excuses, you will dominate every single person you're up against. The 1%. This is a group of people that do what the other 99% don't. They separate themselves from the crowd by constantly pushing through discomfort. They work when others don't. I believe that when we die, we meet the person we could have been. The one we were capable of. The life we were capable of having. I want you to imagine for a minute that when you die, you meet who you could have been. I'm chasing that guy. The emotions, the memories, the contribution, the achievements. I'm chasing it. When I get there, I'm going to go, man, I've been chasing you at my lap. And I want me to go, man, I was watching you, bro. What a run. Man, I thought you blew it on that one chapter. And then, I, then you came back. And then you got knocked down again. Then you came back. You got knocked down again. You did it. You maxed out your life. So I'm telling you, this ain't forever. And when you're doing something that don't last forever, you got to treat it differently. This don't last for 20. This don't last for 30. This might not even last for 10 for some of you. So you got to take full advantage of every single Sunday. You know what discipline really is? Discipline is when you are tired. You want to turn off the alarm and sleep in but you get up and do what needs to be done. Discipline is when you do what you do not want to do now, so you can get what you do want in your life later. Discipline is something very few people have. That is discipline. Stop chasing for motivation and get disciplined. I went through this huge spiritual thing where I, um, I became obsessed with um, the power of the mind. I got into a deep, like really deep, just um, meditation, visualization, and just realizing how powerful our minds actually are, like how we really do paint our world with our thoughts and, and our level of self-belief. You've got to build a bulletproof level of self-confidence that will never hold you back from reaching your full potential ever again. And of course, you'll have haters. People will try to kill your dreams. Anyone building something always does, but it's your job to shut them all up with your results. The best revenge in life is massive success. The only reason you're not the best right now is because you don't believe you're the best now. And when you walk out this room, I want you to go in the mirror.
up. I'm the best right now. He said, before you even become number one, start to proclaim it and say it long before it happened. Say, I'm the number one motivational speaker in the world. And when I was number 20, I started saying, I'm the number one motivational speaker in the world. And I went to the computer and the world said exactly what I said, that Eric Thomas is number one in the world. I spoke it, the world heard it, and it activated. Your problem is that you don't believe you belong here. So go out there, believe in yourself, and proof them haters wrong. Think how many people already made it to the top. So why not you? You only need self-discipline. You don't need to be very smart. You don't need luck. You need that dedication, the will. Did you ever ask yourself what you really want to achieve? Imagine sitting here with all you ever wanted and you don't have to work for it. You would buy some things, retire your family, and then what? I ask you, then what? What people don't understand, the way you have to go for success is the actual goal. What are you willing to give up? Are you willing to skip the parties, cut out the socializing, pass on doing the cool thing on the weekend with your friends? Cause that's what it's gonna take! It's gonna take you dedicating every single fucking moment, every single ounce of energy and effort you have to pull it off. Forget about balance. You have to be obsessed with the thing you want and don't allow anything to pull you away from it. It did happen to me at 19. It did happen to me at 20. It did happen to me at 30. It happened to me at 40. After I had been through all the, all the pressure I thought I could go through, life said, you finished with all the pressure? I said, yeah. I said, let me bring on the heat. Where are the people who talk negative about your goals and ambitions when you are working at night? Exactly. At bed, asleep. They don't know that the way you are going, the grind, is the actual goal. They think the big success in the end is the finish line. I had to stop thinking normal. I had to stop thinking normal. I can no longer be a common man walking around doing common things. A wise man once asked, how big would you dream if you knew you couldn't fail? Look at the game, man. baby. You know, must test your resolve, man. Yes, he does. Must test your ability to go to distance. But guess what's gonna happen? He's gonna find out where his world ends and yours begins. I love that. He's gonna find out where his world ends and yours begins. The ability to go the distance, the ability to go beyond your limits, no matter what is standing in front of you, that separates the winners from the losers. Self-control, discipline. Are you listening to what I'm trying to tell you? If you're not the best in your position, why are you playing? Why are you having fun? Why are you rewarding yourself for something you hadn't accomplished? This is the time to work. Anybody that can accomplish anything that is hard, the only separator is, is that they really want to be there. Once you change one thing, your mindset, you can attack everything. Anybody who's ever became massively successful in any area of life hasn't gotten there until they had suffered and sweated and sacrificed and kept their focus and fought their way through tears and trials and tests. And if you want to reach success, you've got to commit yourself to it and put everything you've got in it. If you do that, it will become your reality. Tony Robbins might be better than me. Les Brown might be better than me. Everybody out there might be better than me. But they don't do what? They ain't getting up at 3 o'clock in the morning putting out videos. So even if you're better than me, it doesn't matter. If I'm putting energy out in the world, the world is going to respond to the 3 o'clock in the morning. Failure is necessary to achieve your dreams. Sometimes it can be frustrating to see that your goal is still miles away, but through mistakes you learn more and more. We remember negative events more than positive ones. This is how we improve. A man's character is not judged after he celebrates a victory, by, but, but by what he does when his back is against the wall. So no matter how great the setback, you never give up, you pick yourself up, you brush yourself off, you push forward, you move on! And you don't allow anything to stay between you, God, and your dreams. If you learn that failure is nothing bad, you will think more positive. The biggest mistake is doing the same mistakes over and over again. Making the best move on the chessboard, regardless of how losing your position is, is a life philosophy that most will never understand. Sometimes you look at your position on the board and you're fucked, but still, Regardless of how fucked you are, there is still a best move. There's always a best move and a worst move, no matter how bad things are. Many people, when they get to a losing position, think, ah, oh, it doesn't matter, I don't have to make the best move anymore. I actually disagree. Maybe nine times out of 10, the best move won't save you, but that one time out of 10, the best move might be just enough to save your ass. And on a long enough time frame, if you play the game repeatedly, day after day, taking risks, 
always making the best move regardless of whether you're winning or losing, it will compound into an upward spiral of never-ending success. It doesn't matter how often you fail, as long as you stand up. No matter how frustrating it is, you keep going. God said in Hebrews 13, 5, Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you, so have some faith. Everybody would love to be able to be themselves, but they can't because they must fall in line with the person in front of them. You want to live that kind of life? I wish you the best. Everybody stop talking now, attention. I told you, all of my critics, I told you all that I was the greatest of all time. Hey, I get glory to God, and we'll for everybody to know that you can't choose against God. You can choose against me any time, but when God involved, Jesus is alive, and, and he the credit for it. And I... Both of them fighters were great fighters back in the days, but both of them had also their own character, different goals. Ali was Ali, and Holyfield was Holyfield. A lot of people like to have a role model in their life. The problem is they start to repeat what their role model said. You have to make your own opinion about things. You have to build your own character on your way. It's about the legacy. Who is remembering you after you die? A great person is a person with great character. You got to understand those things that you see, those things that you clap for, those things that you cheer for, those things that you idolize, they're not role models. They're models playing a role. You don't, you don't know who they are. You just saw them doing what they're gifted and blessed to do for two hours of the day. I would advise you to be that role model for your child, for your friend, for your homies, for that person that looks up to you and looks out for you. So go out there and improve your character. Be the best version of yourself and write your own history. There's nothing outside of yourself that can ever enable you to get better, stronger, richer, quicker, or smarter. Everything is within. Everything exists. Seek nothing outside of yourself. One thing about being in dark places, if you have the courage to stay in there long enough, your eyes will start to adjust to the darkness. Your body and mind will always adjust to more suffering, to more pain. If you want to push harder, know this, your mind quits way before your body does. So you have to be willing to go way into that darkness and find more of yourself. Are you not getting close to the vision? You didn't say the vision and your mama said something about it, so you didn't back off. You didn't say something about the vision and somebody tried to kill you and you didn't back off. Are you hearing what I'm trying to tell you? I'm telling you that you got to be possessed with the vision. And you are the only one who is able to make this vision come true. Not your friends, not your family, not your teacher. They have their own life. It is just you. You've just gone through the worst situation of your life. You're in the hardest season of your life. Something's happened and maybe you failed. But I need you to know that failure is not final. It's formative. It is part of the process. It's part of the journey. Your failure matters as much as your success. How do you think you're gonna grow if you don't ever fail? And yet there's some of you right now, you failed, and you think, well, I guess I'm a failure. No, failure is an event. It's never a person. When you fail, that doesn't make you a failure. As long as you're still breathing, you have the chance to try again. Hey, how was your day? Did you sleep well? You wanted to take a day up again. Tell me, was it comfortable? Wake up! Getting comfortable! Comfortability kills dream! <laughs> Go back to work. You're carrying your father's last name. Did you ever hear your father saying, Son, I don't go to work because I don't feel like it. You know why not? Because the work is necessary. It needs to be done. You are a man now. A man of God. It's your duty as a man to stand up and say, I want to be as important and strong and good-hearted and God-fearing as possible, and I need to work hard to achieve those things. A man has to decide that he's going to do something. He has to decide that. He's still oriented towards his family. That's what makes him honorable, is that foolish as he is, He's decided to adopt responsibility for his family and to try to bear that. He suffers dreadfully as a consequence of not being able to fulfill his responsibility. And if you want to be a man who can take responsibility, you will need discipline. Because discipline is not more than getting out of your comfort zone constantly. There is no big science behind discipline. People are making themselves a hard time because they look for happiness in discipline. You don't always have to be happy. Just sit there and do your thing every single day. Try to be proud of yourself. So I don't wake up and think, how do I feel happy? I don't wake up and say, will this drug make me happy? I have no interest in being happy. I wake up and say, how can I be proud of myself? What can I achieve that makes me proud of myself? How can I do things that make other people respect me and are proud of me? If you have no discipline, you don't dream big enough. Find the art in your work for perfection. Something what makes you unique. Imagine the greatest thing you want to achieve, and then keep that in mind. Whatever you have to do, 
This dream you got, whatever you want to do, will it be easy to just run out there and do it? No. Will it happen overnight? No. Will it be a struggle? Yes. What I want from you is to go out there and fulfill your biggest dream. Every single one of you is destined for something big. God gave every single one of you the chance to do great things. Be yourself, but don't be lazy. Come on. What do you want? Number two, build belief that you can achieve it. Stop choosing the easy path, the path of comfort and convenience. All it's going to lead you to is a life of sh quality, sh circumstances, and a sh lifestyle. Choose the hard path, the path of discipline, the path of hard work, the path of consistency, the path of blood, sweat, and tears. That path will lead you to your dreams, to your goals, to everything you've ever wanted, and ultimately, to victory. When Dr. Martin Luther King said, I have a dream, he already had a PhD. When he said, I have a dream, he was already a minister at Ebenezer Baptist Church. When he said, I have a dream, he already had a car. When he said, I have a dream, he already had a wife. When he said, I have a dream, he already had children. When he said, I have a dream, he had already won the Nobel Prize. When he said, I have a dream, he wasn't talking about himself, he was talking about you and I. Nowadays, it is easy to reach your dreams if you are able to be disciplined. You need to stay disciplined. How is it possible that a child is more disciplined than you? If a child wants something, it will never stop annoying his parents till he get what he wants. What is your excuse? If you're not constantly performing without purpose, you're not going to be ready when the time comes. We don't take a second to realize the purpose is always there. The purpose never leaves us because the very purpose is you. You are always the purpose. Love the hate, love the frustration, because you will face it very often. No matter how many times you fall, you have to take it like nothing. You have one mission, one purpose. You are a man now. I want you to focus. Imagine shooting a man with your last bullet, and he stands there, unfazed. A harmless man is not a good man. A good man is a very, very dangerous man who has that under voluntary control. But that's part of what makes a world peaceful in the, in the final analysis, because if you're around people who are dangerous but disciplined, then everyone watches their step. And that's exactly what should happen. Everybody should watch their step. What did you do yesterday? Think. Every second was spent. Was it purposeful? How much time did you waste on garbage? Stop making excuses and be a man. Be disciplined. Make yourself proud. Make God proud. Are you still there? I was gonna rip his heart out. I'm the best ever. You know, I would absolutely kill you. This is the most ruthless champion in the devil been. There's no one to stop me. It's time to go beyond your limits. That's the only way to improve constantly. You have to push forward. Do what you are supposed to do. Don't chase your dream. Live your dream. Let the bad feelings aside. You will improve on your way to success, on the way to your ultimate goal. Depression is when you and God are not in alignment, it'll drive anybody crazy. When you're not doing what you was called to do, when you're not doing what you were purposed to do, when you're not walking in your it, when you're not walking in your Genesee Qua. Anybody gonna go crazy when you working somewhere you ain't supposed to be working? When you somewhere at 40 hours you ain't supposed to be? When you're not accomplishing what you're supposed to accomplish, so where the devil has gotten most of you is yes, you believe God, but you don't believe in God. If you want it bad enough, you find a way. If you don't want it bad enough, you find an excuse. The person that finishes the race with their hand held isn't it about the, uh, you know, how big they are, how tough they are, their potential, it's their perseverance. Meaning it's not about the dog that's in the fight. It's the fight within the dog. What's stopping you? Are you too tired? Didn't get enough sleep? Don't have enough energy? Don't have enough time? Is that what's stopping you right now? Don't have enough money? Is that the thing? Or is the thing that's stopping you, you? If there's anything in life that you don't currently have right now, it's because of who you are and how you think. What I need you to do is I need you to find a reason to keep going. And if you can find a reason to keep going, I know you're strong enough to do it because you're human. While I'm in the dressing room, five minutes before I come out, my gloves are laced up. I'm breaking my gloves down. I'm, I'm pushing the lever in the back of my gloves. I'm gloves. breaking the middle of the gloves so my knuckle could pierce through the leather. I feel my knuckle piercing against the tight leather gloves on the Everlast boxing glove. When I come out, I have supreme confidence, but I'm scared to death. 
I'm totally afraid. I'm afraid of everything. I'm afraid of losing. I'm afraid of being humiliated. But I'm totally confident. The closer I get to the ring, the more confidence I get. The closer, the more confidence I get. The closer, the more confidence I get. All during my training, I've been afraid of this man. I thought this man might be capable of beating me. I've dreamed of him beating me. But that moment, but I always stayed afraid of him. But the closer I get to the ring, I'm more confident. Once I'm in the ring, I'm a god. No one could beat me. You gotta be clever, you gotta be smart, and not get hit. And when you're able to do this, you're a fighter.